well. Hey, aloha no pa. And you can sing with me the school chant. Hey, aloha no e ku u aina aina o ke ave no o i ka la i o ho ku ka no i u ka o halaki i pili a ka na we we ali i e ku pu ku pu i a o la i ka aina Aina kama aina, o ka o hiya, e o mai kama aina paki piku kokona, e yo, e yo mai e. Good morning, Kona Pacific, first grade. Good morning, first grade, are you here? Please sing it back to me, even though we're not in person. Yes, Mr. Coulter, we are here. All right, ready for the morning verse? I always stand up to say it because it feels more formal, more reverent, more special. The sun with loving light makes bright for me each day. The heart with sacred power gives strength unto my limbs. In sunlight shining clear, I am reverent. The strength of humankind has so graciously been planted in my soul that I with all my might may love to work and learn. Toward us comes light and strength from us rise love and thanks. Morning has come, night is away. Rise with the sun and welcome the day. She sells, no, she sells seashells by the seashore. That's next with all the other tongue twisters for CH, TH, and SH. Um, but first, rejoice, rejoice to welcome spring. Down in every pond, the froggies sing. The peepers chime their clarion notes. Peeper, peeper, peep, peeper, peeper, peep. The wood frogs clear their throbbing throats. Peeper, creeper, creeper, creep, creeper, creeper, creep. Plunk up, plunk up, plunk. The green frog strums and the big baseball frog chug a chug a rums. All right. Now, Auntie Jackie will be along shortly, but first we will, uh, I want to talk to you about the CH, the TH, and the other one. What's the other one? CH, TH, and SH for seashells. This is shells, shells. Shh, be quiet. Shh. Be quiet is like this. Shh. Be quiet. And. <laughs> the train goes chewing along like that. And. This is the one where you bite your tongue and you just whisper it or hum it. The or them, or think, or thin. All right, so those are the three. And the first one is, um, the first one is, we'll do seashells. So she sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. It's actually a song. Shells, shells, and we have, you can copy these down, that would be good. We have shell, and we have she, sh, e, which really should be spelled with two e's, but that's one of those tricky, what we call sight words that you have to just memorize. She, and there's shell, a she shell, 
Oh, it sounds like I don't know how to say seashell properly. A she-shell. Uh, she sells seashells by the seashore. Shore is the other one. Sh oh, 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 sh oh. And the O would say ah, shar, shor, shar. But with the E, our friend, the special E, magical, silent E, helps the O say its own name. So instead of saying sh -ar, like a sh octopus, ah, sh -ar, we say O, oh, the E is helping the O say its own name. O, oh, sh or sh or sh or We could take one sound away and say show. We could take the SH away and just say, and just say or. And uh, that's all I can think of for that one. And she, we could take off the E and just say sh. Or we could take off the sh and just say E. For shell, sh. Eh, oh, I hear three sounds. Sh, eh, oh. We could take off the sh and say L, or we could take off the L and just say sh. That's all the ways to break that up. She sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. So there's those three sh sounds. Many, many, many others. You can listen out for those. And then there's little Charlie Chipmunk. Little Charlie Chipmunk was a chatter. Mercy me. Remember that one? He chattered after breakfast and he chattered after tea. He chattered to his father and he chattered to his mother. He chattered to his sister and he chattered to his brother. He chattered till his family was almost driven wild. Little Charlie Chipmunk was a very chatty child. Do you know some chatty children? Are you a chatty child? I think I was a chatty child. You could probably tell. All right, that's the ch, -ch at, and we did we did talk about this already, but we'll just review it. Ch at. Let's do. How about three words, just like before? Chat, chip. How about just chip, because we have a chipmunk. Chip, chip, eh, 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 ch, eh. There's the ch, there's the eh, chip. Chip. Little Charlie Chipmunk was a chatter. Ch, ch, Charlie chatter, chip. Mercy me, chattered after breakfast, chattered after tea. Ch, ch, Charlie, we can do Charlie. Ch. Ah, this is a tricky one because the A is saying one of its alternative sounds. Ch -ar -o and then I E at the end for that name, Charlie. Like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Do you know that book? Mm. Charlie. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I recommend that one for first graders. That's a good one to have read to you aloud. Um, have someone read to you aloud. Ask someone to read to you aloud from the library, from the bookstore, you know, wherever. So Charlie, Chip, Chat. That's those three. And then the TH. TH. Theophilus. Thistle. This is like Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, but it's Theophilus thistle, the thistle sifter. Sifted a sea full of unsifted thistles. Actually, I have an alternative version of this. Theophilus thistle, the thistle sifter, thrust 3,000 thistles through the thick of his thumb. Ouch! Theophilus thistle thrust thrust. Thrust, thr, uh, like umbrella, and then s, t, thrust. That means like, wah, like that. You can do a thrust with a sword, like that. Thrust means to kind of push something. Thrust, 3,000. Th How about thumb? This is one that some people say 
thumb, and they pronounce it with an F, but it's really th thumb, uh, 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 mm, b, thumb. Kind of silent B, you don't really say that B, it's got a tricky one at the end there, thumb. It's really just pronounced like that. You don't say thumb, thumb, but for some reason, there's a few words like that. The word dumb also has a B at the end, a silent B at the end, trickiness. Theophilus thistle, the thistle sifter. How about three? That's a good one. Three thousand thistles through the thick of his thumb. Three, three. There we go. I call that good for now. Those blends are everywhere. Listen out for all of them. The th and the th. And of course, I'm hoping that you are reviewing every day, every day, some sight words. The two that I told you to work on are these two. But this, that word, uh, she is another one. The and 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 the 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 and the 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 oops the 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 and 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 the 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 practice 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 on those. Let's get Auntie Jackie in the house here. Let's see here. Zuma zuma zuma. There she's gonna show up here in a second. Good morning, Auntie Jackie. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Yes. The sounds a little wonky. Want to try that again? Say good morning, Mr. Coulter. Morning. Oh, the sound is messed up. Your frozen, little glitchy, frozen moment Wait. here. Good morning, Mr. Coulter. That's better. Where'd she go? I think she's trying again, maybe. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. There's a really funny story where this little boy is trying to remember how to say, if you first you don't succeed, try, try again. And he gets all mixed up and he says, if you don't fricassee, which is a, the cooking method, fry, fry a hen. And everybody thinks it's very funny, and the poor little guy's embarrassed. Jackie, are you there? Well, I see you, <clears throat> but you're still as a statue. I'm going to turn off this speaker and try it without the speaker. That might be making it worse for some reason. There, now I hear you better. That may have been my fault on my end. How? Testing one, two, three, testing, testing. Testing, testing. That's good, we can hear you, we're all good now. Okay, because I'm on my, I have two, I'm, I'm here in two ways, yeah? Oh. And no echo yet? No, it's fine, I think. I think. Right, think... Let, let me, I'm gonna turn off my phone for a second because my computer's more clear. Hold on. I'm... Test it out again. Looks good. Sounds good. I think. All right. All right. Yeah, except for the. Okay. Here I am. Perfect. You can hear me good. All good. Well, you can hear me well. Yes, I can hear you well. Well and good. Um, one more time. Can you hear me? Yes, we are all yes, good. We can hear you. Good. Can you hear us? All right. Thank you for waiting, you guys. Good morning. It's Friday, and we're Zoom calling. So today, I want to do something with you that I've done before, and that's our four pebble meditation. So I'm going to invite you guys, if you have permission, to find four pebbles outside. Are you, you know, are you with someone who said, yeah, you could go get pebbles? If you can't go outside and get pebbles, you could get pennies or four small things that you really like, just four small, simple things. So why don't you take a minute or two now to get up, go outside and find four nice pebbles. That would be a small rock, okay, that you could put in your hand. 
right, I'm gonna go now and you're gonna go get your pebbles and I'll see you back here in a couple minutes. Got him. All right. Do you think our friends have gotten them too? It's not too much of a search. Right. Hard telling not knowing, I suppose, as I they say. Know. All right. I am going to take a couple of deep breaths as our friends come back to their seats and they're getting ready to take some breaths. Breathe out. 
breathe out, space. In space. Out, space. Now I'm going to invite you to take four breaths right now, in and out, quietly on your own. You may imagine the flower, the mountain, the water, and space. So four breaths now, quietly. your hand, here's your four pebbles, close your pebbles, this breathing is yours whenever you need it, you don't even need the pebbles, but they're helpful, yeah, so I invite you to go outside again today, as I always do, Mm -hmm. you may find more pebbles, you can take your pebbles with you, and you can practice some breathing, and being calm, because gardening will always bring us back to calm, if we go to the garden. I hope you have a good weekend. And then on Monday, we have our holiday. Think about who the holiday was celebrating. And his name is Martin Luther King. And Mr. Coulter may have spoken with you about that. And I love to celebrate this holiday because this man has taught us to be calm and find our center and to always look for the right way and to be kind when we do it, and to always ask for justice. Okay, thank you, Mr. Coulter. Thank you, Auntie Jackie. Thank you, Auntie Jackie. Well, Hello. well said. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye, first graders. All right. Yes, we will talk a little bit about Martin Luther King Jr. a little bit later. All right. Um, so I'd like to give you a little chance to move around now. Um, I was gonna, I was thinking about the ants go marching, but somehow I think marching around in front of the camera is not gonna do so well. I'd probably get dizzy marching around my stool like this. And it's kind of a long song. It's so much more fun with a group. The ants go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. Remember that one? All right, so um, instead of that, let's go back to Let's go back to Miss Mary Mac. Okay. Miss, are you ready? Miss, 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 ready? Miss Mary Mac, 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 all dressed in black, 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 with silver buttons, buttons, buttons all down her back, back, back. She asked her mother, mother, mother for 50 cents, cents, Cents to see the elephants, elephants, elephants jump over the fence, fence, fence. They jump so high, high, high. They reach the sky, 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 and they never came back, back, back till the fourth of July, lie, lie, July, lie, lie. July rhymes with sky. Sky rhymes with July, and elephants, uh, sense, sense rhymes with fence. Oh, I ran out of room. And there's many rhymes in that one, right? Mac, 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 all dressed in black, 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 black. So Mac and black rhyme. Sense and, el- sense and fence rhyme. Uh, mother, mother, words. You jump so high, high, high. High and sky rhyme. High sky. High sky pie. High sky pie, oh my. Those all rhyme. <clears throat> and then, um, what else? Uh, fence. Uh, sense, fence, tense. A little tense today. Um, or um, many other things that I couldn't think of right now. Um, okay, 
So, nexty, nexty, nexty. Um, I wanted to, um, I wanted to come back to this, this puzzle over here. And we got up to five, and six is really, it gets harder and harder, of course, to keep it figured out and keep it straight in your mind, and also to draw this just right. But we, we, we know what a six-sided shape is called, don't we? First of all, this is a five-sided shape on the outside here. And look, it's a five-sided shape on the inside, two, three, four, five, and a five-sided shape on the outside, one, two, three, four, five, a pentagon. And when you put the star in the middle, it's called a pentagram. And um, I want to do the six, though. So the dots, I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a hexagon. I guess I'll, I'll just draw the hexagon. I could draw the dots first. I'll show you what I mean. You can see if you can follow along. You can put two dots on the top and two dots underneath them, like that. Two dots on the top and two dots there. One, two, three, four. And then we need to only need two more dots. So one goes in between these two, but you gotta put it out here. You know, right in the middle would be there, but you gotta do it out here. And then another one out there. So now I have my six dots, and if I drew lines between them, which I will in a moment, we would have a hexagon. So we are talking about six dots, and how many lines will it make? Let's find out. Here we go. One, two, three, four. I'm careful to leave my dots visible. I don't want them to disappear. Five, six. I don't even run my line right into them because I really need to be able to see them so that I can concentrate. So that I can concentrate on making the other dots match up. The other lines go to each dot, rather. So I have six dots. You could say I have three on, you could say I have three on one side and three on the other. If I was to cut it in half like that, I'd have three on one side and three on the other. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm gonna keep that, I'm gonna keep on counting up from six, otherwise I'm gonna get confused. And now I see that this dot is connected. I can start with any dot, but this one here happens to be connected to this one and this one already, but it's not connected to any of the other ones, right? It's only, this dot here is only so far connected to this one and this one. But there's one, two, three other dots to connect it to. So I'm gonna draw three lines. So we're already at six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna draw one of my lines and say seven. I guess I should be in yellow. Seven. Eight. Nine. Okay, I'm gonna go to this one next. This one is also connected to only these two. I'm at nine. And, because it's not connected to that one yet, not connected to this one either, 11, 12, 12. Okay, it's getting complicated. This one is connected to these two and this one, 12, 13, it's connected, but it's not connected to, oh, it's connected to this one already, but not this one. Oops. Fourteen, and the only two that are not connected at this point, I can tell, are these two. Fifteen. <clears throat> wow. There's a lot of cool stuff going on in this shape. This hexagon, which has been connected using 
15 dots to connect every single one of them. I'm a little scared to try like a seven or an eight, but let's just play with this one for a minute. Look, check this out. I see so many triangles. So many. There's one here. In fact, there's one at each side like that. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then at each dot has two more. It's two more, but really you could say it's three more because this is a triangle too. If you count that one. I mean, you're using two triangles of one sort to make another triangle of a different sort. I think that's, this is probably an isosceles triangle, meaning it's the same on all the sides. And these two um, have a square corner. So one, two, we have one for each side. One, two, we know it's a five-sided shape, so we know it's one, two, three, four. Oh no, it's a six-sided shape. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 triangles because we're adding two more for each dot. So that's 18. And there's actually other triangles in here too. I can see some more. This is a crazy thing. Here's a triangle right here. There's three sides, right? Even though it, it uses part of this green one and part of this little yellow one. There's another one right here. So lots of cool stuff going on, I think. And then of course, every point has these two. So even though this one crosses over that one, I've got another one. I know it's getting too crazy. I know, it's too crazy. You can't hardly see them all. But if you keep looking at this, especially if you draw it really carefully, you could ask a grown-up to help you redraw it. And it's a lot of cool stuff to discover here. Oh my goodness, I even saw another one just now, another kind of triangle. I'll do it in blue, a big one on each corner. That means that that triangle is also here, that triangle is also here, that triangle is also here, and of course it's also, where is it? It's also, oh, here and here. So many cool things going on in this shape. <clears throat> Too many triangles even to count. I think. That would be a major challenge to try and count all the triangles. Hmm? All right. I think that kind of thing is fun. And <clears throat> we have our hexagon. Six dots. 15 lines to connect them all. It's interesting how this is, this goes up one, two, three, four, five, six. Just simply, right? One, two, one at a time. Just goes up by one each time. This one starts at zero and goes to one the same as this one, just starts at one in a way, and then three, and then it doubles to six, and then it adds four more to 10. That's interesting, it added three, it added two here. Oh, I think I see the pattern. One plus two makes three. And three plus three makes six. And six, I'm guessing, oh yeah, four, two, three, four. Six plus four makes 10. And then we gotta add five to go from 10 to 15. So we know that there's, unless we're very mistaken and confused, if we add six to 15, we would have 21, we would have 21, and that's how many lines it would take to join a seven, to join seven dots together. Hmm, very interesting, to me at least. So I love these little kind of puzzly things that, um, that are fun to play with. <clears throat> I like drawing them too. All right. Um,
Next on the agenda is lines and dots. We did that. Blends. Oh, yeah. I wanted to remind you of the... We have to get back to our story of, of uh, Mr. Lazy Bones and then uh, someone who is very different from that, Martin Luther King. Uh, but I wanted to remind you that when you're adding things together, when you're adding something, you're, you're plussing it. Some people say you plus it together. Um, you add them together and you add them up. The very last line in my, my little rhyme about Mr. Plus, Sir Plus, is that the word is called sum when you add things up together. Don't ask me why, because I don't know why. I'd have to look that one up. How did that come to be, where they have a separate word for when you add things up? So when you say one plus two, the sum of one plus two is three. If I have one of something and I add two more fingers to it, I have three fingers all together. The sum of two and one is three. That's how that works. So you'll get used to that word if you haven't gotten used to it already. So we're going to add things up. And surplus, he's a, he's a big, strong guy, a big, barrel-chested guy. And he's big and strong. He loves to eat, loves to eat all kinds of good food. And he loves, he's one of the king's most favorite advisors because he's always getting more and more. <clears throat> the king thinks it's great. The king and the queen thinks it's wonderful that Sir Plus comes in and just adding more and more, more land to the kingdom and more, you know, grain in the granaries and, you know, all the things. He, he continues to add things up and tell the king and the queen the sum, the sum total of all of his, uh, of all the things he's added together. So it goes like this. Yo, I'm Sir Plus. I wonder if you know me. If you like to add, why don't you show me? Some people call me Sir Adelot. Because I like to keep going, poor I am not. I'm not greedy, but I like to pile it up. I'm getting kind of fat, but I'll tell you what's up. And I'll tell you what's fun. When you add things up, you call the answer the sum. <laughs> so that's my little rhyme rappy thing that I made. We could make it a little more rhythmic if we wanted to and get it a little more funky, I suppose. Uh, but we'll play with that little by little, perhaps. All right. So the next thing, um, I wanted to review Mr. Lazy Bones. Mr. Lazy Bones, the story we told yesterday. And I'm going to draw a picture of Mr. Lazy Bones. So Mr. Lazy Bones. Mr. Lazy Bones. I'm going to draw this picture really big. Take up the whole chalkboard. And I want you to think of this on your paper. You've got a main lesson book, and I want you to turn to the next blank page. And this whole board is going to be my paper. So if my board was your paper, you'd turn it so the binding my little spiral binding here. You don't need to draw this. This is me drawing your notebook. This is the little spirally part at the top of the notebook. This stuff here, I just drew that at the top of the board. Like that, so that you would see how it's supposed to go. And then right in the middle of this piece of paper, I'm gonna draw a line. And the line, I'm gonna sort of look at it like this, I'm going to draw a line like that right down the middle of the paper. And we're going to draw a picture of Mr. Lazy Bones being lazy when he's rich and when he's poor. I think I'll put his poor one over there. I don't know why. But um, so draw a line down the middle. And then I'm going to get to work. I'm going to get all my chalk together. And I'm going to get, go crazy here, drawing and drawing and drawing. And I'm going to retell the story a bit as I draw it, if I can do two things at the same time. It's kind of tricky. 
draw and tell the story at the same time. Normally I would ask you to tell the story. Perhaps you remember the story. What's a key word about Mr. Lazy Bones? I should just say, what's a key word for the story I told yesterday? And you might say, lazy or lazy bones. Or maybe you would say, what's the fruit called? Fig. Maybe you'd say fig is the thing that makes you remind you of the story. Um, but for me, it's all about a lazy guy who is so lazy that he wouldn't do a bit of work. So I'm just going to start here, and I'm not sure exactly what colors you have at home. Some people have different colors than others, and I think I'm going to get this little table here so that I can sit down and work like that. So the first thing I'm going to do, like I said, is I'm going to draw a line. And I don't really care what color you use, just a light little line here, like that. Okay? And I better make it a little darker so that you can see it a little easier. Okay. And I'm going to put a tree right here, the fig tree. And fig trees. The fig trees that I've seen don't have much of a trunk, but I'm going to kind of make it so I can, I'm going to make these branches go like that because that's how I've noticed fig trees grow. The branches go all over the place. And I'm going to leave a spot down here for him to sit. I'm going to have him sit in here, seated there. I'm going to put his his head maybe right here, and his legs sitting out like that at the base of this tree. I'm gonna leave a little more space down here than a normal fig tree usually has. And lots of branches going out. And fig leaves, I can't quite I remember what they look like, but they're kind of big, and I know they've got some lobes on them there, but I'm just gonna, just gonna draw, and I'm pretty sure they're alternate like that, or they're not all exactly, hopefully I'm right about that, they're not exactly across from each other, they're near each other, but they're and I'm not drawing each leaf really carefully. I'm just kind of, I would use my block crayon if I were you. And I would just kind of put a blob of green all along every branch that you drew. Switching back and forth from one side to the other, like that. So Mr. Lazy Bones didn't have much in the world, maybe. I'm not really sure. He just had this one tree. Maybe had a little plot of land here by the river. And you know, the river, we could put a river in. The river if it was here. I'm going to put the river kind of going by like this. And the river is going to go like this. And then it's going to get smaller and smaller because it's, it's coming from far away. And it goes kind of past his tree like that. And put some grass down here. Go back to my leaves here. So he didn't like working. He liked to sit around and just relax. <clears throat> he was so lazy he wouldn't even harvest the figs, he just sat there and let them fall into his mouth. And people just, the people did not like that. They didn't like him at all. They thought he was a lazy good-for-nothing and they didn't, they teased him and yelled at him and even threw sticks at him because they just found it so irritating that he would sit around and do nothing while everybody else worked. And uh, <clears throat> I guess I'll make the other side of the riverbank there is green on this side, and we could try to put a sky in. It's a little late, I suppose, but no, with a block crayon, it's a little late for me with chalk, but I think you can do it with a block crayon. 
and you can go right over the figs. Now if I go back and forth too much, it'll get all, it'll smear my leaves a little too much. But, so I'm going very lightly, but you can use your block crayon on its biggest side there. And I think I'll switch to, to, to green, but I'm gonna go very, very light. So now if you're doing this with me, you're going really, really light with your green block crayon, super duper light. Super light so that you can draw Mr. Lazy Bones right over that green. And there's the place where the sky, the horizon line where the sky and the meets the, the land. You can see the line there. This is all green and then up oh, and that's the sky. The sun would set like that behind that spot there, or it would rise up there maybe if we're looking east. All right. Now, I can go back and fix all that, add to it a little bit later, but for now, I'm going to check the time, and I'm going to draw Mr. Lazy Bones right here. Might not get to Mr. Lazy Bones in the rich side today. Have to wait until next time. All right, let's see here. So Mr. Lazy Bones, you can choose a either brown or um, a different color to make his head. Brown or yellow or gold or you can mix gold and brown, that might look the best. He does sit in the shade there. Let's give him a, let's give him some kind of farmery hat. Actually, this is, this is Asia. So really his hat maybe wouldn't look like that. It might, might look more like this. Southeast Asia. So he's probably gonna have a hat more like that. Sun hat, keeps the sun off, and it doesn't touch your head, except in a couple places, so that it keeps your head cool. It barely touches, one time all the way around like that. And there's a space up there so your head can cool off. And we give him a shirt, well, maybe I'll give him the rest of his body first. And then I'll go over it with some colors. So there's his shoulder and he's sitting right about there and his legs go out there. Is that too long? And there's his foot. That would have been a little too long. And we'll have one arm coming down this way resting like that. All right, there he is. His head's a little big for his body, but that's okay. I'll bring that a little closer since I'm only focusing on this one side right now. All right, so there he is, and we can give him some clothes. Mm, give him a little color, I think. We'll give him some blue pants. And how about a reddish, pinkish reddish shirt?
kind of make it kind of a shirt that goes down part way down his sleeve. And there he is, sitting by the river, doing nothing at all, but waiting for some figs to fall into his mouth. I could have drawn him with his mouth ah, upturned toward the, toward the figs. Oh, we should draw some figs. That should be the last thing we do. Um, when I see figs on a tree, they're always green, around here at least. Um, and we do have all these green leaves already, but I think if we just push harder with a stick crayon and draw some figs and make them kind of fig-shaped, that's kind of like a teardrop shape. Or we could make them, we could make some of them kind of purple. I think when they get ripe, it seems like they get, they should get purple when they get ripe. What if we put purple and green together? There we go. I'm going to draw them all green and I'm going to come back and draw them purple. And they're a little bit less oval than that. They're a little bit more like fat at the bottom and pointy at the top. Let's see if that looks better. And then, there we go. I'll better make it hanging down. Fatter at the bottom. Really, they stick out all directions, I think, but I'm, they're going to look too much like leaves if I do it that way. And hopefully I'm not talking too softly. All right. Purple and green together, making some figs. And we can keep on going with that. Draw as many as you like on there. Uh, I think we'll finish retelling the story tomorrow. We'll just say that at this point, he's sitting around and one of the figs, of course, maybe we'll draw one in the river. One of the, ri one of th one of the figs, a bunch of figs, drew, fell in the river and floated down to where the princess and her uncle, the king, were sitting. And, and then the story goes on from there, doesn't it? So we'll review the rest of that story next time. And now it's time to be done. And there's Mr. Lazy Bones waiting for figs. Scorned by his community. They don't like him very much. Too lazy, they think. All right. Blessings on the rest of your day. Oh, Martin Luther King. Almost forgot. So Martin Luther King Jr. Day is Monday. And we, he's such an important person to our country that we have a, a whole day off. We have a whole day off to celebrate him. And uh, it's a national holiday. The entire United States, I think, has, a, has no school and many people don't have work that day. And um, it's because he was a great leader in our country back um, Actually, back when I was a baby, when I was just a little tiny kid, he saw that there was a lot of unfairness. There was a lot of mistreatment of people. And he decided that he needed to do something about it. He and many other people that he inspired to work with him, many, 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 many people, worked together under his leadership uh, to help our country be a more fair place and have everyone treated fairly and equally. And he did it through a very special way. In fact, I have a picture of him somewhere over here. I don't think it's right there, but um, he, I do have a picture of somebody else, though, that was very important to him. He, was considered, he considered this guy one of his teachers. That's Mahatma Gandhi. And Gandhi used the same technique of peaceful protest, nonviolent. In other words, he knew things had to change, 
and he wasn't powerful compared to everybody else, but he knew that things had to change, and so he inspired many people to work together to march and to protest and to, and to, to purposefully try to um, get attention by making sure that things were fair and right. So he used Gandhi's ideas and built upon them of nonviolent protest, where you're not going to fight like so many people have fought to change things, but they were not going to fight. They were going to do it peacefully. And so he's one of the great heroes of, of modern times. And we'll study, of course, much more about him as you get older and hear more specifically about the things that happened. Um, but he, has, he was a great speaker, and sometimes people like to play um, his speech called I Have a Dream. He has a, a vision of how the world would be better, and he shared that speech, um, and, and millions of people like to listen to it every year on his day. So you can ask your parents more about it if you want to, your grown-ups, I should say. And, um, and I will see you Tuesday, the day after the celebration day for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And he actually, a lot of people, I will say this, a lot of people like to do something good that day, do something good for others, especially someone who is maybe has it a little harder than you, someone who's who's having a tough time of things. You could go and, you know, a lot of people like to go and um, bring food to people who are hungry or help someone fix up their, their house who needs, who needs some fixing up or anything like that. It's a day of service. A lot of people celebrate Martin Luther King Day with a day of service. So um, I look forward to being with you next week. Actually, next week we are starting back in person. So I'll actually have you here in the classroom starting on Tuesday. That's today's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday in four days. That reminds me we forgot to do the day and date. Oh, well, I'll see you Tuesday. Uh, some, of, uh, some of you I'll see Wednesday, actually, in the classroom. Some will be here Tuesday and some Wednesday. All right, bye for now.